Hello and welcome to the episode 6 recap of Under the Bridge. It's 1982 and we see a young Rebecca baking biscuits. Her brother comes in then with a bloody nose and he's been bullied. Cam and Gabe are best friends at this time and both siblings it seems have a bit of a crush on Cam. Well at least Rebecca does and from the viewer's standpoint it's very obvious. And she's a little bit jealous of their friendship. She's also quite mean to Gabe about it, telling him that Cam is only pretending to like him so that he won't be picked on. Cam does notice that Rebecca's not always very kind to her brother, as Rebecca tries to become closer to Cam. Later she sees helicopters flying overhead towards the lake, and Gabe has been missing for a while. Not missing missing, she just can't find him in the house anywhere. Two kids come to the door and tell her that Gabe fell. Now I can see why she feels that this is her fault. Gabe was in quite a bit of distress and she made him feel worse about it and he stormed off and that was the last time she saw him alive. In the present day, the police go looking for Warren. I didn't realize that he was indigenous. Anyway, obviously they're following up on the lead but Cam still believes that Dusty is lying and it wasn't him. Rebecca and Warren are still at the warehouse. They fell asleep there. Now he's a really decent kid and there's nothing inappropriate going on here at all, not even a hint of it. But I think Rebecca hangs out too much with these kids. I get that she's trying to get information not only for her book but for the investigation. But I don't know, it's almost like she becomes an older teenager again herself, taking acid and trying to be cool. Yeah, it's supposed to be an act, but there's a part of me that thinks that coming back to Victoria, the place where her own childhood as she knew it, was kind of cut short because of Gabe's death, has this weird effect on her. She has this immaturity, she's quite unlikable. and. It's difficult to explain, but being in Victoria just doesn't seem good for her. I do really enjoy unlikable female characters though, so even though I don't like her character, I still enjoy watching her, if that makes sense. Anyway, actually I edited this whole video and I had to come back to this point to add that I've changed my mind. I actually think that Rebecca's hanging out with Warren is inappropriate, very inappropriate really. I don't know if she sees him as her little brother in a way, but he's still a teenage boy and she's this young, attractive, cool woman. I don't know, I feel like even if it's innocent, she shouldn't be spending this much alone time getting closer and gaining trust of this kid. It's weird and I don't like it. She takes Warren to her parents' house and she makes him some food and she mentions that her mother wrote a note about being disappointed that she missed her dad's birthday and it's kind of like a joke to her and yeah that's what I mean by the immaturity thing like is she playing this up for the kid or does she really still think it's kind of cool and funny to drop acid and miss her dad's birthday you know you can't really tell Warren tells Rebecca that he told Samara his girlfriend about what he saw the night of Rena's death and he wanted to go to the police he admits that he kicked Rena once when he was drunk and he thinks about it all the time she loans him what looks like Gabe's suit so that he can go to the dance because it is prom this episode. She offers to tie his tie and she tells him that Cam is one of her friends and she asks him if he'd be willing to talk to her. Also that scene where she ties his tie, I think she's trying to be the older, cooler sister figure but mm -mm, I didn't like it. We get an early timeline scene then from when Rena was still alive and at Seven Oaks. She and Dusty are finally sick of Joe and they're dancing around their room rapping about how they're going to take her down a peg. Just then, one of the counsellors finds Rena's letter confessing that she made up the claims against her father. If he gets charged, he'll have those offender charges for the rest of his life. But Rena is still pretty selfish and she says that they can't just kick her out like that. They can and they do though. In the present day, Rebecca tells Cam that Warren witnessed the crime. Cam wants to arrest him because there is a warrant out for his arrest anyway, but in a pretty smart move, Kelly's rich, she has a family and resources, she'll get away with this murder if Warren is arrested. They can perfectly pin this on Warren. He fits the stereotype of the perfect criminal and it'll be an easy win for the cops to pin this on him and consider the case solved. Kelly meanwhile is out shopping with her mom Joe and Dusty. Joe and Kelly are pretending that they're all going to Mexico but when Dusty is out of earshot, Kelly tells Joe that they'll play along until they can get rid of her and Kelly eyes a box of rat poison. Jesus, Kelly. And Joe, I think I had a smidge of misplaced trust in her last week for some reason, but that's gone because she does not hesitate. They bump into Rena's mom in the shop then, and Kelly makes a show of looking sad and regretful and apologizing to Rena's mother, saying that she wishes she was there to help Rena. Rena's mom gets home and she knows that it's Kelly. I've been very judgmental of Rena's mother because of the Jehovah Witness stuff, which yes, played a role in pushing Rena away, but she was trying, especially the night of the dinner party. 
they just needed more time. Anyway, I loved seeing her this episode get angry and take charge and trying to find her daughter's killer. Kelly, by the way, is rich, rich, and the girls are taking photos on the stairs at her house, her mansion, pretty much, before their prom, and Kelly shows Joe that she has a juice mixture in her bag, presumably with the rat poison. She's quite delighted by the whole thing. She's a proper sociopath. We get a scene then of Rena packing her bags at Seven Oaks and her uncle is there to pick her up. He talks to her about her life and the future and Rena cries and she apologizes. She does want revenge though. And this scene happens before the first scene in the first episode where she asks her uncle to drop her off. Back in the present, Warren and Samara are on the phone. She's disappointed and embarrassed that he stood her up for the dance. So he changes his mind because he's at Rebecca's parents' house and he says he wants to go to the dance. Rebecca's like, you can't, there's a warrant out for your arrest. Cam and her dad go to the dance looking for Warren, but they find Samara and they question her. She tells them that he saw Kelly kill Rena. Then there's a really wild exchange and bit of information that Samara has. So she's asked how Rena got into the water. And Samara says, well, before they pulled her in, Kelly made Rena take her boots off because they were Steve Madden's and she wasn't just going to leave them there because Joe loved those. That's what Kelly told Warren. By using the word they, she then implicates Warren because obviously Cam and her dad realize that Kelly wasn't the only one who pulled Rena into the water. So Kelly and Warren really did do it together. I am shocked. I thought that Warren was innocent. He was adamant that he only kicked Rena once. Anyway, yeah, the police also find Rena's boots in Joe's cupboard. Because remember, Kelly had given the boots to Joe. Meanwhile, the girls are in their getaway car and Joe, who I still stupidly hope will come to her senses, doesn't. She asks Dusty if she's thirsty, encouraging her to drink the poisoned drink. Dusty's about to take a sip, but she kind of stresses out and she says that she keeps picturing Kelly doing what she did. She does eventually take a sip, but thank goodness, she immediately feels sick and she chunders out of the car. Kelly is freaking out because she doesn't want the car to be messed up. And also her plan of killing Dusty is also ruined now. Anyway, Joe says, no, don't worry, I know what to do. So the girls take Dusty down to the train tracks. They ask Dusty if she's sure that she wants to do this, go with them to Mexico. And Dusty says, well, she has no choice. There's nobody here for her. Kelly says that she could lay down on the train tracks. Joe adds that if she dies, all her problems would be solved. We would get it if you want to do it, Joe says. And then Kelly says that they'd even send money to Dusty's family. So while they don't physically coerce her, Dusty isn't sober at this moment. She is quite vulnerable. She's young and she has these two girls kind of ganging up on her. So she goes and she stands on the train track. She's crying. You can tell she doesn't want to do this, but she feels kind of trapped. Anyway, the train's coming. It's hooting. Kelly has a smirk on her face. Taking a life to her is nothing. Well, no, it's not even nothing. She enjoys it. Just then, Joe breaks and she tells Dusty that's enough, she needs to come off. She even goes and pulls Dusty off the tracks. I knew it. Anyway, the girls struggle a little bit and Kelly is really mad at Joe. Warren comes to the dance and says that he came to say goodbye to Samara and Cam sees him there. He's placed under arrest. Rebecca gets to the school just as Warren is being put into the police cruiser. She's mad at Cam for arresting him and she asks what she's doing. Cam says that Warren's story is BS and he played her. Rebecca is still defending him. She says that he's a kid and it was a mistake. This is going to ruin his whole life. But Cam reminds Rebecca that she wants justice for Rena. Rebecca doesn't seem to care that Warren killed Rena. Cam also accuses Rebecca of using her for a story. She just wanted material. In the car after the train tracks incident, or the attempted murder, Kelly is disappointed in Joe, telling her, well, she thought that she was gangster. The cops corner them soon after and they're forced to stop. The girls are taken in, Joe for assault and accessory and Kelly for murder. Dusty is walking some distance away, not in the car with the girls, and she gets arrested for assault and accessory. It sucks that when she probably finally was walking away from them, it was just a little bit too late for her anyway. Also, a really good song is playing during the scene, and I googled it. It's Between the Bars by Elliot Smith. It's really good. For some reason, Dusty's scene just absolutely devastated me. And yeah, everybody gets taken in, and that's episode six of Under the Bridge. Now, I'm sure that more is going to be revealed over the next few episodes, but I'm still kind of reeling from the Warren reveal. I feel like I should have seen it coming, though, because Kelly was so sure that he'd break up with Samara, remember? Sure, she could have just been delusional, but... Was something actually going on there? 
How were these two the only ones to stay behind and go back for Rena? See, I don't know what the truth is about Warren. I don't know who he is, so I can't wrap my head around him being implicated in this. But I'm so interested to learn more about him. He seemed very much in love, well, teenager love with Samara, and nowhere near breaking up with her. So I have a hard time believing that he participated because he loved Kelly and because Kelly wanted to be rid of Rena. And he didn't make any moves to protect Kelly, really, because he told Samara. So yeah, this was another heavy episode. We still have two episodes to go, and I'm so glad that this is not a bingeable show. I look forward to it every week, and I love the slow rollout of weekly episodes. Anyway, if you have seen this week, feel free to share your thoughts and... Thank you for watching.